want to know a little bit about how people spend their money. Well, if you want to know how I spend my money, then stay tuned because I'm going to be breaking down all the details and all the categories of how we spend our family money. So I use the Money Saving Expert budgeting spreadsheet, but there's lots of free budgeting templates that you can find out there. Microsoft has one and I have used the Microsoft one previously, but I find this Money Saving Expert spreadsheet a little bit more accessible. So I, I typically don't actually use this one on a regular basis, but it has been useful to me in the past. So I thought let's start here because this is free. And for those of you who are just getting started, this might be like an easy point of entry to understand how people budget their money. Right, let's get started. So in the budget spreadsheet, you have a section for your income. So this is our income from work and that's combined. And this is after we have paid our things like tax, um, national insurance, any other deductions, etc, uh, etc. Et and then we have income from savings. So we have £50 from savings, um, but that comes from dividend reinvestments, which I'll talk about, which I will talk about in a different video. And then we have um, some income that we get from rent. Um, so we have two rental properties. Now this is after our expenses, but before we have paid tax. So there will probably be an additional 40% tax on top of this, but there are things that we're able to write off. So that's in total, so 9,450 is our total income. Now then, we go straight into the mortgage section, so mortgage or rent. So you will see that the spreadsheet is spread into two parts, so you can put it into actually four parts. So you'll have a weekly total and you can put in the monthly total, or you can put it the yearly total. Either way, it will then automatically calculate what the monthly total is. So for example, you'll see here, I have 500 pounds for buildings insurance, and that automatically calculates it into 41 pounds and 67 for the month. So things like building insurance are big one-offs where you are going to be charged interest for paying it off at a uh, on a monthly basis. Honestly, I would just pay, pay it annually because it's not worth paying the interest on it. So this is how I sort of, manage to save a little bit of money by just paying things on an annual basis but you should also put away a little bit of money away to cover that expense so when the yearly amount comes due you can just pay it because you've really saved that money so uh that's a little tip for you and then we've got council tax so we live in a detached house and we also live in london and we are living in an area that has a fairly high council tax so unfortunately it's about nearly 300 pounds and then you'll see here water i pay that on a, a two monthly installment so they normally send a bill for like the first half of the heat the first half of the year and then the second half of the year but in total it's 640 pounds and then gas and electric as you know gas and electric prices have been fluctuating throughout the last year and a bit so i just put away 200 pounds obviously it's summer it's a lot cheaper but again 200 pounds a month and then household maintenance so this is basically things that are unexpected now um I normally put away about 100 to maybe 50 pounds, but on average, it's probably around 80 pounds a month that I put away into another savings pot to cover us for things like, let's say the boiler breaks down, or I don't know, there's some sort of emergency, there's a flood or whatever that isn't covered by insurance, so just to make sure. And then we've got um, internet, TV license, and then our mobile phones, which are on contract. Um, and the reason they're on contract is because it worked out cheaper to be on contract than it was to pay outright and then also then pay for the SIM card. So that's why. Um, then you have a section here where you've got insurances. So I don't have mortgage protection insurance and that's probably something I need to sort out, to be fair. Uh, boiler and plumber cover, that is covered under the cost of our insurance. So we do pay an additional premium for that. Um, but definitely something um, mortgage payment protection I will be looking into because it's just something that I think is it's a sensible thing to make sure that you're covered for. Um, and then food, probably about 700 pounds I would say roughly and then eating out this is like takeaways so we don't actually go to restaurants because we've got three kids who's gonna look after them it's just not yeah and then also taking the kids to a restaurant just not even a thing right um, and then we have uh, food and things like that that we buy at work so I'd probably say roughly about 340 and as you can see as I said it automatically calculates it for you there then we have um, things like you know stuff for our car right so we have uh, breakdown insurance then we have car maintenance so i save a little bit of money towards this because sometimes you know your brakes might need replacing or you need to just service the car or um there is um uh road tax 
etc etc um, all these things kind of need to be paid so just a little bit of money towards those to just make sure that we're covered um, and then car insurance so as I said we always pay these things off on an annual basis so we have two cars and that's how much we pay for the two cars um, and then petrol petrol's petrol right <laughs> so about 500 pounds a month um, <clears throat> then we do have a car loan and the reason is we've got three kids we needed a car that could fit all three of them comfortably um, and all have an isofix anchors across all three in the back seat and so uh, we didn't have the money to pay you know 26,000 pounds in fact a little bit more than that to buy the car outright so uh, put down a 10k deposit and then um, took out a 15k loan and hopefully this will be cleared soon so <laughs> save us a little bit of money there um, and then regular savings so this is where we save for um, things like emergencies so essentially I put away £150 into a high interest savings account with NatWest and then we have a lump sum savings uh, these are things like premium bonds etc another way of like saving cash so about £300 in cash that we try to save and then uh, £200 into goes into an ISA and then £300 for the kids um, then you'll see here the cost of childcare is you know has come down quite a bit this used to be about £4,000 but things have like calmed down one we've moved to a different nursery that is a lot cheaper than one of the big chains that we were at and then number two the twins are now older than two years old and therefore they got the 15 free 15 funded hours they're not free 15 funded hours and that has also helped reduce the cost of childcare. And also they don't go to nursery full time, they only go four times, four days a week. Um, on the day that they don't go, we try to save a little bit of money towards the cost of babysitting, but this is quite a variable. So I put a hundred pounds here. It's probably a lot more than that because each time the nanny comes, it's about fifth, it's about 120 pounds um, a day. So, this is this is like falsely represented but I think I've actually represented it in here so this is like on the one one or two occasions where we might need to just hire somebody for a couple of hours um, and then nappies so we do have to pay for our own nappies uh, to the nursery and also obviously for the house and we've got twins so nappies and wipes etc and then my oldest daughter goes to drama class and she also goes to swimming so this is roughly about 75 pounds a month uh, then we go to our subscriptions so what I haven't accounted for is a subscription that I have with Canva uh, this template as much as it's good it also doesn't allow you to do very much edits so this is the only place that you can edit here these fields are locked so you can't change them um, so just bear that in mind if you're intending to use this spreadsheet but anyway um, this is how much we spend on subscriptions probably add another 30 pounds for Canva and then we have um, I I have a gym subscription do I go no um, anyway we'll, we'll talk about that in another video <laughs> uh, beauty treatments so this is like when I go and get my hair done I actually rarely go to a hairdresser nowadays because you know we're just trying to save money actually you know so that's that's that and then um, clothes so 500 pounds from clothes uh, yeah, I mean, because we've got three kids and they're all three of them are girls. So the oldest uh, girl we overbought for. So she has a lot of clothes that we just use as hand-me-down for the twins. And then uh, Christmas, you know, we save a little bit of money towards that. So £200 a year, to be honest, not an awful lot. Um, and then we give a little bit of money to charity. I wish we could afford to give more, but that is where we are and then you can see here then it um, you go to your spending totals and it will basically calculate everything and you've got nine thousand four hundred and thirty three pounds as the total amount here and you'll see it's all broken down by um, the different categories here so you can see the biggest category here is our mortgage and household insurance uh, council tax etc and then then here under family is basically childcare um, is, is what that is um, <clears throat> is a lot um, and then you will go here and you'll check your results and then you'll be able to see that you spend less than you earn so um, if you're in the red then it will um, give you uh, some of the indicators of what you can do um, to reduce you being in the red so um, yeah I mean that's pretty much it for our household I hope this has been helpful if you have any questions or comments or any thoughts on 
where we might be able to optimize then let me know uh, but otherwise i will see you for the next video thumbs up like and subscribe thanks for watching bye